Fabrizio had a question earlier. Uh, he's in a an environment where he can't talk very loudly. He said, um, why is hip internal rotation so important in, say, a squat? And is there any correlation between anterior pelvic tilt and a loss of hip internal rotation? Well, with the anterior pelvic tilt, there can be, and there and and it, so it's going to be an it depends kind of a question. Um, so the anterior tilt can reorient the, the position of the acetabulum to in such a way that it will it will create a bony block to internal rotation. Um, or that again, depending on how it's it's an, so like all anterior tilts are not the same. Some occur due to um, extension above the pelvis, and some occur with extension within the pelvis, if that makes sense. Um, and the, the ones that, that uh, occur above, depending on how significant they are, can actually create a bony block to internal rotation. And so if I reorient the position of the acetabulum um, and, and I, and I uh, retrovert the acetabulum, in doing so, I'll, I'll usually block internal rotation. And that also makes it difficult to be a, a really good deep squatter. So, so uh, deep squatters tend to be able to either, either antivert the acetabulum, which, which increases the amount of available internal rotation, um, and, and will, again, allows you to squat deeper. Um, and it also increases the amount of hip flexion you have. So again, it makes, it makes for a much better squatter. Does that answer that question? I think it does. I can't hear you, Lance. You're muted. I think it does answer your question. Can you clarify one more? Um, I think you said retroversion and then antiversion. Yes. Which, so, okay, so. Would you like to see it? Yeah. Do you have a pelvis? I was trying I to do. find an image. Of course. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I don't even know why I said that. <laughs> Is there ever a time you do not have a pelvis with you? Say, say again? Is there ever a time you do not have a pelvis with you? Well, Maybe a it's a catch. Or a <laughs> <laughs> so, so, acetabulum. Right? Side view. See it? So if I do that, you see how it, it kind of covers the, it, this would be the head of the femur in here. So it would cover the head of the femur and it rotates posteriorly. You see that? So that can block internal rotation just by creating a bony block. Okay? Now, if the whole pelvis orients this way, it doesn't retrovert the acetabulum. Right, so there may not be a bony block to internal rotation. If it rotates three dimensional like that, that will retrovert the acetabulum. That does not. Okay, if I can do that, if I can posteriorly rotate the ilium, I antivert the acetabulum, and that increases my internal rotation and flexion, and that's my Olympic weightlifter most likely. Does that help? I love that. I think Fabrizio is liking that too. Uh, Patrick, that's exactly what he was talking about earlier. Does that correlation make sense? Yeah. Uh, I, Bill, I thought that was really no, cool. Elvis <laughs> Toys. <laughs> that ain't that. They're different. Okay. It's what, what do you mean by antivert and retrovert the acetabulum? I know. Okay, so watch, watch, watch here. You got it? So all I'm doing is, so I'm gonna do it from the front first, okay? So here's the, I don't have very good light. Let me do it on this side. So there's the acetabulum here. You see it? Can you see the acetabulum open? I'm gonna make it disappear. It's a magic trick, ready? It's gone. See it? Oh, so that's, the, eh? that's retroverted. Got it. That's, and that, see how it's open? That's antiverted. It's gone. It's covering the head of the femur. Blocks internalization. This frees it up. That's different from when the femur is retroverted or antiverted. That is correct. 
it's not the same. This is acetabular antiversion and retroversion. Okay. Yeah. That the, the femoral the femoral side of things has to do with the uh, the angle of the neck relative to the femur, the the shaft of the femur. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Who's got questions? We got time for one or two more. Eric Manis, now that you're sitting there. I'm soaking it all in. Okay. Fly on the wall. You and Kevin, fly on the wall. <laughs> remember, I reserve the right to be wrong with everything that I've said tonight. Do you have one, Kevin? Well, just to clip, just to follow up on that. So, if if that anterior tilt happens without the rotation, that's coming from above the pelvis. Okay. Yes, gotcha. sir. Yes, sir. That's a good clarification. And then, and that's something kind of important to note because it does change your approach as to how you're going to address that when you're trying to alter movement, right? Because they're not the same. So how would you address one, like if the, the rotation versus it happening at the lumbar spine, what's your differing approach to correct that? Well, the, so the one that has the rotation inside the pelvis may actually have more of a frontal plane related issue, okay? Um, so you, you sort of have to start the same. Because I, I, I still have to posteriorly rotate the ilium. In both scenarios, I have an ilium that is going forward, right? right. So it's either rotated within the pelvis like that or it's good like that, right? So I'm going to have to, so from a sagittal perspective, I have to sort of approach it the same way. If, if, I, if it's just the whole pelvis orienting forward and I, and, I, and I posteriorly rotate it, I usually don't have the frontal plane issue because I've got a pelvic diaphragm uh, position and I've got, I'm, you know, it, it's right where I want it to be. Whereas this might still be an issue, right? Okay. But your test, your tests tell you what to do in that scenario. 